So hello everybody, how are you today? It is Friday, so it's time for another Dax Fridays and your Dax function every Friday. Now, in today's Dax Fridays, I want to answer a question I've got on my 101 series, which was how do you troubleshoot Dax? And I told you in that video that the best way to learn Dax is to practice and practice and practice, but also to troubleshoot your Dax measure. So when you create a Dax measure, and it doesn't produce the result you expect to understand what that number is that came up. What was filtered in the background or what happened that produced something else. And that will allow you to understand DAX and DAX functions better. So I'm going to give you an example on how to troubleshoot or how I troubleshoot time intelligence that hopefully will help you and give you ideas on how to troubleshoot DAX. Obviously, depending on what you're trying to do, you will troubleshoot a bit different, but this will give you ideas. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, guys, so here we have the north wind data set that we always use. And um, what we want to do is to calculate the last n months of sales. So, in this case, we're going to calculate the last two months of sales. So, you got that. You need to do it. How do you do it? So, the first thing probably you will do is okay, what DAX function do I need to use to? Be able to move periods and you have quite a few so you have for example um, date add is one of them and I'm going to leave date add for you to do after this video so you will do the same calculation using date add and see what happened and try to understand if it gets the right result and if not what happens so dates between what it does is uh, it gives you a bunch of dates between a specified start date and an end date so that is something that it could work for us and dates in period it does the same but you don't need to specify the end date you just specified an interval or that at least that's what you might think it does so let's get cracking let's go to power bi and see how do we calculate this last end, end dates so i have already created the last the dax measures but i'm going to show them to you anyhow so I have here a last two months dates in period, and it is calculated with calendar dates. You need to have a column, and then the last date of the calendar, I use max, but you can use last date, and then minus two, and then months, okay? And they give us 154. You probably know the answer already, and you might say, oh, this is the right one or not. But for these cases, for understanding, so I have calculated the same, with dates between because we thought when we read the DAX uh, glossary that it might be the same. Like, hmm. Okay, so for the, to calculate that is a little bit more complicated, not a lot, but a little bit more complicated because you need to calculate the last date, the start date. So the last date is always the last date of the calendar, but the first date, the start date, is two months backwards. So you put, you calculate the year, the month minus two, the day, and then you put it into a date, and then you let DAX do the job. So far, so good. Now, when we put them on a the table, you'll see that we get different results. So one is actually quite different. You have 154,000 and 251,000. What's going on? What's going on? Why are they so different when they seem to be identical? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. So this is what I normally do to troubleshoot time intelligence. Put a date you know, the, our date column from the calendar. And then I put the column that I'm trying to calculate. So in this case, it says I put sales, but it could be anything. And then I put the measure that I want to troubleshoot. In this case, we're comparing two measures, so we're going to put both. And here we have everything. Well, 154, 251, nothing has changed, but we have it at the day level, so we can sum. Now, I have limited the calendar so I don't need to export everything because we're going to export this into Excel, our wonderful Excel. So we're going to go in here, export data, save it, yes, and we're going to do the calculations manually. Yes, that's the best way to understand how these things work. So I'm going to go here to date, put this as a short date, there we have it. And now, let's see if we find out 
what, what is being calculated basically. So this is the 18th period and this is the between. The 18th period is 154. So easiest way, if you have no clue, zero clue, you just go and I'm going to do to start you know, scrolling through the sales numbers and you need to look here at the sum because we're going to find this 154, okay? To see what dates were fed to the table. So I'm going to start and then look at the sum and we are going to stop at 154, which is there. 154, 419, here it says 416 because there is decimals in one, not in the other one. But we have the date in period return, the table was from the 1st of, of April to May. Okay, so it was May and April. Now, let's look dates between. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to grab these and try to find these 251 number. So we go scroll up and look at the sum, okay? So we go sum, 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 251, getting closer, getting closer, 216, ooh, 251, okay. Now, this gave us the dates between the 6th of March up to the last day of the calendar. Do you see that the calendar that was fed to our calculation was different? Hmm, so this is why we're getting different numbers. Now, if we look at our DAX definitions, here it says that it will go back periods, so it won't go back calendar dates, it will go back period. So if you're in May and you say minus two, it will be May, April. It won't include anything from March. While dates between, it just goes by date. So it goes exactly three months backwards. And that's where you see a difference between the two. So now you know, now you've learned that dates between and dates in period look the same, smell the same, they are not the same. And they will give you completely different things. But you have a way to understand now how. Another way you can do it actually is you can put, for example here, the, the, you know, the last date, you know the last date, but what is the first date? So you can create a measure for that and then you can just put it in here and see what is the first date and then you will see it here okay and you can do the same with dates in periods you will see it so you don't actually have to export to excel and but i find it very intuitive to export to excel and actually see the numbers rolling and understanding like what dates are being fed to my calendar by doing the sum so this is all i really hope this helps you this works every time with time intelligence. It does, you can do the calculations manually. So you will see, you will find that number and understand that, oh, these are the dates that are being fed because this is what time intelligence is all about. Nothing else, you're feeding dates to a measure and that will calculate whatever in between that interval that you fed it to. So hopefully this is useful. Please troubleshoot your DAX measures if you get a result that you didn't expect because you are going to learn a ton. Okay, I'm going to shut up because it's Friday. You probably want to go home. So enjoy your weekend and I will see you again on Monday with another Power Query video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.